Right then. Uh, what day is today? It's Friday. Which means it's time for you to ask the expert. And one big topic in your emails this week is just where has your money gone if you saved it with an Icelandic bank? Working lunch viewer Luke Sanderson has quite a tale. He had money with two banks in Iceland. He lost £8,000 when IceSave froze its savers' money at the start of the week. So he decided to take action with the £5,000 he'd saved with the other bank, Kalpthing Edge. I tried to move the money to my current account for, via a chaps transfer. Um, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't appeared. I've spoke to uh, my current account holder. They can't see it pending. Um, it's a real worry. I've got, I've got a credit card bill to pay for a holiday that I've just been on. And um, I've, got no, I've got no savings. I can't touch any of my money. Um, with the ice save and the cap thing problem, this black hole's been created and nobody's telling me, including ING, who've now taken over, nobody's telling me where my money is. Another viewer, John Rose, says he spoke with ING on the phone. He was told that any transactions which were taking place when Cap Thing was first taken over are not completed and so frozen. Well, rather unhelpfully, ING says it doesn't know how long this will take to sort out. So, Christine, what should people be doing? Well, first of all, the financial services compensation scheme are writing to affected savers. But I think the first thing to say is the UK government has clearly said that savers with the UK part of Icelandic or other, you know, foreign banks basically, will not lose their savings. And this implies, as I said earlier, that there is an absolute guarantee, although that hasn't actually been said in that way. So I would think that there is less cause for panic, thankfully, and that savings will be safe. The other thing to remember is everybody's trying to get the money out. It will absolutely overload the payment systems. Um, it's not sinister in any way. It just clearly is volume, and there are only so many people to process these payments. So that in itself shouldn't be cause for concern, although, of course, it's easy for me to say that sitting here. I do appreciate that. It is worrying. We've heard a lot about protecting individual customers, but lots of our viewers want to know if clubs and charities are protected in the same way. Um, Graham Kerry is the treasurer of his Village Gala Committee, and John Goddard is the treasurer of his local church, and they've both written in. I've got to say that it's not absolutely clear and the research I've done on this very subject, because it's impossible trying to get through to people like the Financial Services Compensation Scheme at the moment, again, that is not their fault. They have a finite number of people to answer telephones. But it doesn't seem that clubs are covered at all. Um, the only reference I can find on their websites relates to Christmas clubs. And it says they're not covered, but of course small businesses are. Individuals absolutely are covered. Small businesses that meet certain criteria are covered, but it does not seem that clubs um, are covered, but it, I if I find something more, then I'll ask for it to go on the BBC website. We'll get it on there as soon as we can. Mm, the Whitakers are uh, pensioners who are worried about their retirement money that's currently invested in Newton Higher Income. They ask if they withdraw and uh, uh, reinvest elsewhere, or should they leave it and ride the storm? So this one is much more about the fall in the value of assets rather than the concern about insolvency. If you have an investment fund, your assets are segregated from your fund manager. So if, if goodness forbid, your fund manager did go bust, your assets are kept there separate. But this is the value of shares and perhaps corporate bonds in that fund. What I'd hope is that looking at their investments, they hoped to actually invest for the longer term. Because no action has been taken to sell out, and let's be honest, there's lots of people very much more better qualified than me that didn't sell out. Um, it, you really have to stay with it. If you urgently need money for a particular purchase, get out now because we don't know where we're going. We're hopefully, we are at the peak of this crisis. But otherwise, you're going to have to stay with it. If it's a longer-term investment, your dividends, your income is still going to come through. It may be reduced, but you are going to get your income. But now, I think, really, you have to stay in and see out the recovery. There lots more to plough through. Simon wants to know, when my I save ISA money is reimbursed, will I be able to transfer it back into the ISA system? Um, I suspect I'm going to be saying quite a lot that we're still waiting to see detail, but you know, applying some logic here, the government sponsors tax efficient savings. I cannot imagine that any, you know, the rescue is going to have people lose their tax benefits. So don't do anything drastic, first of all. Read the small print. Yes, I'm pretty sure you're going to keep your tax benefits. Another question linked to ISAVE from uh, Ben Hansford in Yeovil, who'd like clarification on interest to date on fixed term bonds with ISAVE. Um, Fixed-term bonds deposits should be treated in exactly the same way as any other savings accounts with ISAVE. So I don't, I, there will not be a difference with the treatment of um, one type of saver and another just because of the type of account they have. It should be absolutely the same.
Neil from Cardiff is an investor in NS&I bonds and holding premium bonds. Now, he wants to know how safe this money is and does the £50,000 guarantee cover NS&I savers? Well, NS&I, National Savings and Investments, um, you're guaranteed by the UK government. You can't get much safer. David uh, Buckley's also emailed. Yeah, David Buckley saying that he's heard a lot about the problems that banks have been having recently, but what about the security of offshore banking? OK, offshore banks are often subsidiaries of UK banks or other international banks, so depending on what activities their parents are into, they're probably going to be having you know, much of the same problem. It's important to remember that not all offshore territories have a financial compensation scheme. Isle of Man does, some of the other offshore territories don't. Little small banks probably aren't affected. Christine, good to Christine, see you. Thank you very much. much. James, just one last thought from you in about 10 seconds or yeah. so. The slowdown in the economy, do you have to rethink your plans for investment, for jobs? Um, we've always tried to run our finances in a very prudent way. We've got a long-term investment program, very important to meet the energy challenge, so that's what we're aiming to do. All right, James, thanks very much. James Smith, the man who runs uh, Shell, is our special guest today. That is all that's from it. Working Lunch. That's it from Working Lunch this week. We'd like to say thank you to all the new viewers who've tuned in. We do hope to see you again on Monday at 12.30. Now, we've got money-saving tips for your food shopping. Also, the man who set up lastminute.com, he's here to talk about his latest plans. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye for now. Do take care. Bye-bye.